What's up, guys? This is Tai Zen. With me today, we have the honorable grandmaster, legendary, world renowned leonfood.com. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the great oracle of crypto, you know, the Chuck Norris of crypto, and an all around good guy, you know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then with us today, we have a uh, very special guest, guys. Uh, this is the first time that we've done this on our channel. Right, we have Adi Seidman. Right, he's the CEO of a company called YouNow.com. Say hello, Adi. Hi, everyone. Right. Thanks for having me. All right, mm -hmm. uh, thanks for having us here of and course. allowing yeah. us to use your office. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. So as I mentioned, guys, a few weeks ago we did a uh, uh, a uh, update video where David and I we came to New York and uh, we tested some ICO software, and and that uh, at that time we could not really share with you guys what the name of the project was because we were not done with our research to where we were comfortable announcing it to the public, right? So since then, we're very comfortable about it based on the research we've had, and now we're coming back, as we promised you guys, we're coming back to uh, the YouNow office here in Times Square in New York City, right, to interview uh, Adi and his team. Uh, we finally got a hold of him today, you know, they had a very busy t uh, day today, and so it's past 5 p.m., right? So work day's over, so we finally found some time to, uh, to catch up with Adi here and to ask Past 6.30 p.m. 6.30 p.m. No. <laughs> okay, so, um, so before uh, we get into uh, the, the props project and you now and everything, let's get, uh, let's just, uh, uh, can you share with our audience, Adi, uh, a little bit about your background and how you, uh, you know, which, where you came from, like, you know, how you got into the live streaming video business and, and, and how we got to where we're at today. Sure, know? sure. So um, I started in uh, interactive video back in the 90s before the internet. That, that dates me. I know I look young, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so at the time before the internet, if you were doing, uh, I started in 94 with laser discs. You would oh, program interactive video. Or you would build discs yeah. like that. Yeah. And, and then, um, you know, there were audio discs that were sold in Tower Records. And on them, the most advanced ones, I was working on Nine Inch Nails at the time and Peter Gabriel and Marilyn Manson, there would be a digital track. And so when you put your audio into your audio disc into the computer, there would be a little folder come up and you click on it, the executable would have basically an electronic press kit. And I would do uh, video games where you could mix your own Nine Inch Nails audio or you can you know, watch videos from Peter Gabriel. Uh, and then when the internet came, um, a lot of people came to me and said, hey, we want to put that online. Can we do this type of interactive video online? And so I started doing uh, make your own MTV music video, make your own Toyota car commercial, make your own E-Trade baby. I co-founded the world's first online karaoke called K-Solo Karaoke, which was sold to Fox MySpace at the height of MySpace and became MySpace Karaoke. Um, did um, user-generated radio ads, uh, which was called Target Spot, that I co-founded in 2006 or 7, uh, which was a joint venture with CBS Radio to allow consumers to create radio ads and traffic them down to the zip code and get reports on how many listeners and you know the reach and the payment was all done online. And that was sold uh, a few years ago. Bain Capital invested in that and Union Square Ventures invested in that. Um, and you know, broadcasting, we didn't call it live streaming at the time, we called it personal broadcasting, has always been this holy grail of sorts in my circles because it didn't require any kind of consumer authoring, it was just a button. Uh, and when mobile and social was available in 2011, um, I dropped everything and I decided to just go for it. And so we were actually the first mobile live streaming in the US. Um, in uh, 2014, we added um, a business model to it, which was microtransactions. So on the one side, um, users could purchase into a virtual currency, a non-crypto virtual currency at the time. Uh, and on the other side, creators could earn. Uh, we were the first to do that. Um, and um, you know, since then, a lot of uh, folks uh, came into the space, uh, Facebook Live and YouTube Live and Twitter and all that. And, uh, we are extremely excited that the economy, the two-sided market that we built, um, uh, you know, continues to grow. 
Uh, okay. And um, we have 60,000 transactions, microtransactions a day today. And you're talking about on the YouNow.com uh, platform. Right, right. Okay. And so on YouNow.com, uh, we have uh, 40 million registered users. We have uh, several million unique users uh, every month. And now we're coming out with the props platform. Okay. And we are uh, leveraging that community. Okay. Um, th Be the video experience, yeah. If you mind, Adi, like, like uh, Leon and I on our team, we always like to look at the big picture of things, right? So can you help share with our audience what is the current state of the social media, the content creation arena, such as like YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, and Twitter, and Twitter Snapchat, Snapchat and all that. Because you've had a lot of experience in, in this content creation social media arena for many years now. And you have some insights behind the scenes that a lot of us as viewers and users may not be aware of. Yeah, from the yeah. business side. So, you know, we are part of that ecosystem because mm -hmm. the business model today is whether you're YouTube or Facebook or you now, you are a rent collector. You take 40, 50 percent of the fee of all the transactions, and that's the business model. Um, and you know, when you look at really the duopoly of, of Facebook and YouTube, uh, they can you know charge what they want. So, so basically, like whenever uh, we have our cryptocurrency investing channel on YouTube, you're saying that whenever because we don't pay attention to the ads of what it makes, right? So. Where every dollar in ad revenue that, that our channel generates, then YouTube takes about 40% of it. That's correct. Okay, yeah. so that's why you're calling a rent collector. So they're just collecting that 40%. That's correct. Okay. And so, you know, YouTube amassed, I think you told mm -hmm. uh, the audience in the yeah. last video, $75 yeah. billion dollars in enterprise value. Yeah. Facebook, hundreds of billions of dollars in enterprise and, 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 value. And uh, you, like you mentioned uh, in, in that last video, we said uh, Facebook collects 100% of it. That's right. Facebook gets it all. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not just 40%. Yeah, they collect the end. All of it. <laughs> Twitter, the same thing. Yeah, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn, all those. LinkedIn, all those, yeah. And, yeah. and if, you, if you think about it, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Snapchat went public mm -hmm. for $25 billion. Mm -hmm. Those creators who made the content on Snapchat and made Snapchat what it was saw nothing Zero. of yeah. that. Big and fact, without yeah. them, without their initial contribution, there would be no Facebook. Uh, Snapchat. Snapchat. Snapchat yeah. yeah. And so the developers on those platforms, the content creators on those platforms, the users that promote and mm -hmm. invite their friends to join there, all of those folks, uh, without them, those platforms would have never grown. It wouldn't have the value that it has. Correct. Yet they see very little and often nothing of the value that they are creating every day. In a decentralized ecosystem, mm -hmm. everybody who contributes to the growth of the network gets rewarded so, mathematically mm -hmm. and immediately. And cryptocurrency allows us to do that. So to talk about like, okay, so right now the current state of the, the social media content creation arena, that arena is controlled by one owner, one company, one organization that controls everything. For example, like Google controls YouTube, Facebook controls the Facebook platform, right? So what, what are some of the clues and some of the hints that you saw that, hey, you know, the decentralization of this, of this field or this industry is the next wave, yeah. right? Because it seems like you've always been on the forefront of you know, what do you, got, what do you always call them, bleeding edge technology? The bleeding edge, yes. So what, what were the, some of the clues or the signals along the way that you saw that, hey, you know what, we need to transition from this centralized model where you now is centralized to where we need to decentralize that? Yeah, so I would say there were two main things. Uh, the first one is content creators mm -hmm. have come to us over the years and said, you know, Adi, I get a check at the end of the month for my rev share, but you know, you're going to become a tech millionaire, and I'm going to be a has-been in a few years. Okay. Can I get paid in stock options? And then we would see, you know, whales, people who spend on our platform, mm -hmm. sometimes they spend tens of thousands of dollars a month, mm -hmm. asking, can we invest? Now, we are a venture-backed company. We're not set up as a C-Corp to, you know, give stock options to everybody okay. and, and, and to allow anybody to invest. Mm -hmm. But we have heard that demand of the creators, mm -hmm. of those who are contributing yeah. to the network, for them to have a personal stake in the platform that they help build. They're like, Adi, I bring thousands of new users sure, here. Yeah. What do I get? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's one side. The, the sort of uh, uh, flip side of that same argument is, you know, one of our investors, Comcast. 
they own NBC, they own Universal. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we talk to folks like that uh, in the media industry, they are also relying on Facebook and YouTube mm -hmm. for a lot of distribution. And I don't think, I don't want to speak on their yeah. behalf, but I don't think that they're happy with the fact that those uh, centralized organization, that duopoly can decide what revenue share there is for everybody And, and basically they can just pretty much demand what price they want. And these I guys are- Have very little leverage. Yeah. And so, you know, this decentralized economy where mathematically, according to a formula, and we published our formula in our white paper, mm -hmm. everyone who contributes gets rewarded Whether is, is very appealing. Content yes. creators, or Engineers, users who users. promote the network. If I invite 20 of my friends, guess what? You know, mm -hmm. the system knows the exact value of every new registered users. You can and should be rewarded for that, and then you're motivated to continue to grow the network. Okay. We're a small company. Mm -hmm. We're 40 people. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are excited by this uh, opportunity to have, you know, asymmetric warfare. Mm -hmm. We yeah. want to harness our yeah. millions of users mm -hmm. and, you know, new uh, yeah. people who are mm -hmm. finding out about us today to work with us to you know, appreciate the value of this new network. Mm -hmm. And you know, a decentralized ecosystem allows all of our interests to be aligned. Mm -hmm. So in, in addition to those two points of you know, the, uh, um, the, uh, the YouTube and Facebook controlling all the uh, control and what you just said there, you know, talk about the censorship that that mm -hmm. that you see that that we always talk about. Yeah. So, uh, as you know, in the news, uh, at, um, and in fact, you Ty, in yeah. our last video, we, we talked about at 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 apocalypse, ad apocalypse yeah. right? And YouTube is is known, and not just YouTube, but they're known for censorship. They're known mm -hmm. for for a variety of reasons. Sometimes it's not even clear why um, some things are getting censored, or or maybe not censored, but at least flagged uh, for their content. Um, how do you think, um, what's your view on... Well, that's, it was, we were bringing that up right, because yeah. the, those two things that Adi just pointed out, yeah. that, you know, that he saw the signals that were pointing that, hey, this, this industry needs to be decentralized, you know? Yeah. And what I wanted to add was that the, the third point was that the censorship issue. Yeah. Because when things are centralized, it's easy to censor people. Mm -hmm. Like when you're the one that's controlling the platform, you can censor whoever you want. And I think that going towards a decentralized nature Mm -hmm. allows the platform and, and, and everyone to benefit because now we have more of the freedom of speech mm -hmm. for, for everyone. That's true. You know That's what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so when you saw this, uh, you know, these signals that were letting you know that the, this industry needs to be decentralized, right? There's a lot of different players that came in to, to try to solve this problem. As far as our research has shown, you guys are like a little bit farther ahead than everyone else because you guys have revenues coming in each month. You guys have you know, register. You know, forty million registered users. That's a bunch of users, right? So, talk about what what made you transition from uh, the you now that you guys are currently running. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys are making money. You got revenues coming well, in. What is the, what is you now's business model right now? Like, how do you guys make money yeah, right to, now? To, today, mm -hmm. we are similar to Facebook and YouTube. We are rent collectors, mm -hmm. and we take you know forty to fifty percent of the revenues that are coming in from the advertisers. No, from the in-app purchases. Oh, so can okay. you explain the in-app yeah, purchases? Because this was this is, this is, this is kind of surprised yeah. to me too when uh, you explained it to us the first time. Did I show you a demo? Did and, I? Did yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You I said did. that people can buy like ice creams, Coke bottles, and I wish we could show yeah. the audience right now. Maybe yeah. we can edit it in. Uh, well, we'll do a demo, but yeah, um, basically, um, you know. The, the service is free, mm -hmm. and 98% of the users just use it. They mm -hmm. chat with the broadcaster, they vote the broadcaster mm -hmm. up, etc. But if you're looking for uh, deeper engagement, mm -hmm. uh, if you're looking to support the broadcaster, you can buy into a virtual currency, mm -hmm. just like on a Zynga game, and mm -hmm. you buy 500 bars for $5, and you can use that for superpowers. Okay. So all of a sudden, you can give them, instead of one like at a time, you can give them a thousand likes. And okay. that helps them trend. When they trend, they get discovered by more people. You actually help them. You've created a bigger audience for them. And they get a cut, a piece, like 50, 60% of uh, that revenue. Mm -hmm. and, and, so and that's bought with 
real US, US fiat dollars Correct. or euros or is this real fiat currency? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Using? About two million dollars a month right now mm -hmm. is spent on our in-app currency. This is not cryptocurrency, yeah. mm -hmm. which is called bars, and that works only within our app. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so these you now bars, the users are actually buying those you now bars to give to the broadcasters they like. Correct, to the broadcasters they like, and they give them mm -hmm. also in order to deepen their experience mm -hmm. so they how, get they get noticed but how are they they get like, feedback what, what, if i let's say i'm watching you your channel and i like you what is my incentive to buy you these virtual goods what do i get as a because i'm spending user? real money because yeah. i'm spending real money for what that i'm getting something for free like why would i yeah 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 so by the way we didn't invent this business model <laughs> okay. this yeah. business model was invented in china okay. on desktop broadcasting mm -hmm. which was you know very very big mm -hmm. and still is um, and there's there's three main reasons why users spend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that blew my mind too. The first time you you yeah. explained it to to us, yeah. you know. So one is for status. So when I spend, I get more crowns. When I am in the app, people see me. I have crowns. I'm somebody. That's, oh, so you're that's known terrific. as a big spender. So <laughs> you 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 get maybe more respect, and yeah. you have a status. Yeah. Um, and you know, people like to you know, I'm not a newbie. I'm a veteran here, oh, you know, okay. etc. Yeah. And I have some authority. That's one. Mm -hmm. Two is they want to support the broadcaster. They generally, yeah. I have I have broadcasters that I support because yeah. I love what they're doing. They're mm -hmm. playing the guitar, or they're funny, yeah. or they're engaging with me, or you know, I, there's a one flight attendant who broadcasts every day and. She tells stories about her life and her experience as a flight attendant and answers people's questions. Mm -hmm. It's a fascinating broadcast. Mm -hmm, you know, yeah. she is a pro. Uh -huh. yeah. She deserves to get paid. Uh -huh. yeah. And so, you know, the, the, the interesting thing about microtransactions is that, you know, and Mary Meeker wrote about this earlier this year in her uh, uh, overview of mm -hmm. the digital uh, marketplace, is that generates from users 50 cents per user per hour and that's in live streaming and in gaming. If you compare that to revenue per user per hour from advertising, that's almost 8x. So it's a very strong model because mm -hmm. you know people can actually show their appreciation and microtransactions mm -hmm. are a real thing in this yeah. world. So the second thing is to support the broadcaster. Mm -hmm. okay. The third thing is to create communication. So people are at okay. home, people are on their device, they're usually alone. Yeah. If you are spending, you know, you're catching the attention of somebody. Now they're yeah, responding to you. Now exactly. you're making friends. Now okay. they're calling you out. Yeah, because we, we so, do that. We do that on our channel as well. When we initially started our channel four years ago, we would pay attention to the people that were donating to our channel. Mm -hmm. You know, like who's this guy who just donated to us? And they, they, we we mention them, and sometimes they just ask to be remain private, but we still thank them anyway. And that was in the beginning. Now we, we've done well enough with the crypto investing that we ask them to send those donations to people that need it. You know, like the new projects that they hear us talk about and they support the projects, mm -hmm. then go, go send the donations there or go spend it there, but you don't send us the donations. <laughs> We, we don't need they're, they're listening. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. yeah. We, we say that all the time, though. Yeah. I mean, like, the, we don't need the donations. Send yeah. it to somebody else. If, if you like what they're doing or something, send the donations to them or, or to somebody else that needs it, not to us. Uh, we don't need it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but, so that's, so that's, that makes sense, though. Because in the beginning, when you look at it, like, why would somebody spend their hard earned dollars to go buy a virtual bar? Or to, to get, give, or but, but that makes to, sense. Even, like, I was surprised with that because. It, most people who already get something for free don't then go and voluntarily give money for it. Mm -hmm. You know that that's just yeah. how human nature is. But it it goes to show, I guess, your business model that there are enough people that do, even though it's completely free, that they will pay. They will basically tip somebody who they enjoy yep. voluntarily yep. without even. A charging them saying no you got to pay before you can watch me or, or something yeah exactly yeah. and, and uh -huh. again we didn't invent this model uh -huh. in a sense that uh -huh. this is a free a classic freemium model yeah freemium it's free sure. for everybody uh -huh. but if you want extra features if you want to yeah. go up a level uh -huh. you know just uh, here's a way to pay up and, and uh -huh. enhance your experience uh -huh. what our innovation was is that we brought it into the interactive uh -huh. video realm uh -huh. and this was the first time where mobile video uh -huh. and microtransactions were connected uh -huh. and so you know we're leveraging this experience that we've had to the next generation platform that is a blockchain platform that I can't wait to talk about. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. so well, I mean, that, that's a good segue uh, into the, 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 the blockchain stuff, right? So you guys are doing this, you have your own 
token or not token, but your own bars that people buy and sell on your platform already. So what what prompted you or, or gave you the idea to transition from that into the cryptocurrency? I mean, we see an obvious reason mm -hmm. as cryptocurrency traders and investors. We see an obvious reason why you would do that. But can you share with our audience like what you saw, mm -hmm. the, the, your vision of how cryptocurrencies yeah. can help your platform and your users? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So I would say, um, you know, a few main reasons. One is live streaming is just one use case. Mm -hmm. There are many. There is, you know, the decentralized YouTube. There is, you know, social video apps, etc. Our uh, current mm -hmm. uh, in-app currency works only within this use case, and yeah, we it's only wanted in-house. Yes, and okay. we wanted to bring it to a decentralized economy that can do anything. So, you know, for example, you know, I mentioned Comcast as an investor. Um, you can uh, imagine uh, network programming where people can watch it together with friends. Or where the um, you know uh, uh, announcer can drag somebody from the audience to ask a question. These are just simple additional yeah. use cases that go beyond the regular live yeah. streaming. The, the first time I saw the the demo uh, when you, when your team demoed it uh, for us, um, the thing that I noticed is that because it has like a staging area and then an audience area, and you can pull people out of the audience and put them on stage so that everybody else can listen to them speak and stuff. My first thought was that that's really cool for like just conferences, staff meetings, team meetings, because you can pull them up and instead of using like Google Hangout like our team does, it's a real pain in the butt. And sometimes somebody needs to speak and we're not able to give them that time to speak. So with your app, uh, the new uh, app that you guys are building, that, and I was kind of surprised at how fast it was in real time. That, Great, I hope that we can you know, show a demo yeah, to we'll, the Yeah, we'll get users. with your team and Great. then we can do a live demo so everyone can see uh, what that is, you know. <laughs> we, we just want to get the big picture view yeah. from, from your so, mind so, first, you know. So, so one thing is multiple use yeah. cases, and we wanted a, a, a currency that mm -hmm. uh, transcends multiple apps and multiple use cases. You know, tomorrow morning it can be, um, you know, uh, auction where you can participate from home. Yeah. Uh, it can be anything. What, what was that app that you mentioned about that had that kept requesting you guys put a yes and no voting button on there? So America's Got Talent has okay. been doing auditions on you now for the past three years. And so on one side of the screen you have the uh, producer from America's Got Talent and on the other side they're pulling up people from the audience. Okay. And you know for, for the past three years they've been asking us to put this uh, you know voting buttons on the screen. Now we have one use case for our app. They're just one user. It's not an open for developer app and so we can't engineer for every user the buttons that they want. With the new platform, America's Got Talent can, mm -hmm. you know, use the APIs and create their own experience. And, you know, Project Runway can create their own experience for yeah. their interactive mm -hmm. programming. Same thing with Family Feud or any of those game so shows I, like I, that. I think partnerships is going to be a big part of your, your business model going forward. Like all these different shows on traditional media, they can offer to, you can come on you now and participate in that show, not just watch it passively. That's exactly right, and I want to make a comment on that. Uh -huh. um, everybody knows, but people don't realize. Eyeballs for the past 15 years mm -hmm. are going away from traditional television, mm -hmm. and they're going to the Snapchat and the inter uh, Instagram experiences. Mm -hmm. And you know these traditional media companies that create television, they know that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they're asking themselves every day, what are we doing in order to be here where the consumers are? Mm -hmm. And they're asking, how can we adapt our IP, our intellectual property that we've developed for years, whether it's a game show or a reality show or whatever it is that has brand recognition, mm -hmm. and make it applicable here? Mm -hmm. Uh, and they're thinking, how do I make it interactive? How do I make it participatory? On Snapchat, 65% of the people are on camera and participating. That's what this generation wants. It doesn't just want to lean in, it wants to jump in and interact. And so we, with Props, are creating a platform effectively for interactive television, where anyone can decide what the experience of the users are going to be. We provide the technology, we provide the economy, and we provide distribution, and it can be any kind of interactive do television you, do experience. You believe uh, this type of experience will su surpass the traditional over-the-air broadcasting TV or cable TV that we have in the future. Is this, is this like, if, if this is as powerful as you described, why would I ever turn on my TV to watch? I I'll tell you, first <laughs> of all, I don't own a television. <laughs> okay. okay. I have a monitor that I can throw stuff on. Uh, yeah. uh, but, but I'll tell you another data point. Okay. The gaming industry. 
mm -hmm. 1.8 billion gamers in the world. Okay, that industry is a hundred billion dollar industry a year. Hollywood is a fifty billion dollar industry. Half. Half. Okay. okay. Why? There is a trend towards participation. You know, and that's a leading indicator that people want to participate. When you are playing a game, you are actually participating in the unfolding uh, uh, media creation right in front of you, and that's very alluring and it's very satisfying. Mm -hmm. These are the same kind of behaviors that we believe mm -hmm. that the consumers are expecting today, are demanding today. They were born with iPads all around them. Grandpa and grandma are on the mm -hmm. iPads. They're jumping into it. They're used to being on screen, and so enabling consumers to participate is a big trend that we are uh, providing mm -hmm. a solution for with the props platform. Mm -hmm. Now this is not something that is just speculation because offline you, you shared with us, I don't know if you're able to share that publicly, but offline you Don't get me us, in trouble. Yeah, but you shared with some big name companies, the big brands that have reached out to you, you know, mm -hmm. to, to, to see how they can put their shows and things like that on the, on the props uh, platform especially on the Rise app that you guys are building. I mean, is that something you I can tell you what's public information. Okay. Um, public information is that Comcast is an investor in us and that Comcast owns NBC and Universal. Okay. Um, that um, They're the ones that broadcast the Olympics uh, yes. in America. Yes. Okay. Yes. So At all over the world, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Uh, uh, they do. Uh, uh, I can tell you that uh, Broadway Video is an investor in us and Broadway mm -hmm. Video does shows like Jimmy Fallon and other stuff. Um, and that, you know, sitting here in New York, part of what we, I can tell you that America's Got Talent, um, yeah. which is uh, owned uh, by Fremantle, they also do American Idol and they do 60 other shows mm -hmm. already working with us on the You Now side. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we're at the center of that so, world and, you know, a big uh, push that we uh, are planning for props is to make sure that some. Mm -hmm. uh, American Pie content is going to yeah. be on it. So I have a question. Like, why are you creating this? Like, you now has been around, I think, for six years now. Yeah. So you've already built up a very strong brand in, in terms of you now. Why are you creating this new brand, Props? Why don't you just take? Why don't you just make you now into what Props is? Why are you bringing up this new brand that no one's ever heard of, uh, uh, and not using the the marketing and brand recognition you've already built up with you now? Yeah. So um, it's a great question, mm -hmm. and because it seems like a huge sacrifice. Yeah. yeah. Well, because you have I'll a successful tell, I'll tell business you what, already. I'll tell you what the thought process okay. was there. So about a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. when Facebook and uh, Twitter and YouTube all started doing live streaming, um, we said to ourselves, "Do we want to be in this margin business and fight these big giants on their terms?" We are product innovators. We pride ourselves for inventing this you know, template mm -hmm. for mobile live streaming. Let's use our uh, strengths. What is the next generation platform? And okay. you know, we looked at that and we decided on three things. And this took months and months of looking into the data and, 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 and uh, consumer research and looking into our souls and asking ourselves, you know, what is the next generation of you know, interactive experiences on mobile devices? And the three things were, one, Everybody's equal. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense that only the person on the screen can get a like, not yeah. to mention a gift, not to mention getting paid, and that 96% of our users don't even get a like ever. Because, so, you know, A, everybody's equal, everybody can get a like, everybody can give and receive, everybody can earn. Mm -hmm. That was the first dimension that we decided about. The second dimension was multiple use cases. Who yeah. said that this template is the template? You know, it can be anything. You guys yeah. gave examples yeah. of, you know. Um, and then, and then the, the, the third thing is we knew that the economy could be uh, much better and much more liquid. And at yeah. the time, a year and two months when we started this project and we mm -hmm. started designing it, we didn't realize yet that we were talking about cryptocurrency. That wasn't until about eight or 10 months ago. Yeah. Uh, and all we, we knew that we wanted to be more liquid. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and in the back of our minds, uh, there was our creators who would come to us, and as I mentioned before, say, hey, can we get paid in stock options? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, and what do we get in the end of the day if yeah, we're just working for... Yeah, basically they want for, a stake in the, in they, the, in they the want business. A, and so um, 
adding the cryptocurrency layer, that was the third thing, where we are completely aligned with everybody else who contributes to the network, and mm -hmm. us as a small company of 40 people now can harness all this power in order to grow and bring our vision to the world, because yeah. we're very passionate about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So, you know, those three things came together for us to create props, mm -hmm. and we decided that we had to make a choice. Is it going to be backwards compatible mm -hmm. to our current platform mm -hmm. or not? And we <laughs> fought deep into this, and it was agonizing at times. And we decided that we would be more free to innovate uh, and mm -hmm. uh, have more leverage and build it right if we were not restricted to being backward compatible mm -hmm. to a platform that frankly was built four years ago, five years ago. Mm -hmm. And we also brought in a new many-to-many -many video technology that you know, you've know you seen yeah. it, mm -hmm. does a lot of stuff that the current technology doesn't do, like yeah. you know, allowing you know endless amount of people to be present at the same place at the same time and interact uh, with each other. We yeah. just want you guys to be fully aware that, you know, do your due diligence, you know, research the mm -hmm. project yourself, you know, we are probably going to be very biased about this project, you know, for several obvious reasons. One is that we are, you know, cryptocurrency investors. Number two, we are big content creators. We've been creating content about cryptocurrencies long before we, mm -hmm. some of these other channels just popped up a few months ago. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a very big bias to, for our team towards a project like this that is going to solve huge problems that we see in the, 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 the video content space. Mm -hmm. And this is the first project that we've seen since we started investing in cryptocurrencies that that have, you know, who cares about the white paper? I don't, I, I, what I care about, there's employees here, that that's what I care about. And then there's a CEO that we can contact and reach out. And Adi has been very, uh, what do you call that, gracious to us? Like we, mm -hmm. you know, when we came down here, I mean, anybody that we wanted to talk to, we can just literally just walk over there and just tap them on the shoulder and ask them questions. There was no restrictions. There, there's, you know, so we do appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I appreciate your diligence and bringing yeah. that diligence to the folks at home. Yeah, like we've never had anyone here like say, hey, you can't go there. Or you can't talk to that person. And, and, you know, we just, he just gave us free reign to come in here, shoot videos wherever we want, talk to whoever we want. So that was... That was really, you know, he's like, hey, we're open. Just, I mean, do what you guys got to do, you know, and let me know if you guys need me for anything, you know, and that, that was it. So, anything else? You uh, no, that's all. All the questions. Okay, I so we want to say so, thanks for thank uh, having us thank here, you, so you know, much. Yeah, and, and this you. is just the, the first video, guys. We're going to have other videos coming up where we'll talk to the development team, the, the product team, and other people are involved here. You know, uh, Adi has given us access to all these people. So, we want to be able to do our diligence and, and share it with you guys, and we hope you guys like it. And if you do, give us a thumbs up. I can't wait to get onto the Rise app so that when you guys like our stuff, you guys can give us a thumbs up and we'll get some tokens for it. <laughs> uh, <all right. laughs> At least it'll pay for the Starbucks coffee. <laughs> That's, right. You know? That's right. You know. And then so thanks for watching us, guys. Um, if you guys like the Props Project, can you tell them where to go? Yeah, uh, www.props project.com mm -hmm. and uh, there's a link there to the white paper get on the mailing list and get on the telegram channel and uh, we'll be in touch and continue the conversation okay well. and if you guys like this type of boots on the ground type of research that we are doing you know moving forward in 2017 our goal there's thousands hundreds of, of ICOs coming out and our policy moving forward is to you know what have our team boots on the ground research the projects that we look at and, and meet the people behind the project and not just invest in just a white paper anymore <laughs> and actually have real people behind their project, sure. okay? And yeah. preferably a working software, <laughs> if possible, <laughs> like these guys do. Okay, so thanks for watching this, guys. And if you like this type of research, uh, go to www.cryptocurrency.market slash newsletter. And this is where we broadcast out. Make sure you go to the website that uh, Adi just gave you guys. You know, check out their uh, project, sign up, register do what you guys got to do you know so we'll see you guys in the next video when we talk to the the dev team and other uh, uh, folks here thanks for watching this and we'll see you guys in the next one you could mix your own nine inch nails audio or you can you know watch videos from peter gabriel uh, and then when the internet came, um, a lot of people came to me and said, hey, we want to put that online. Can we do this type of interactive video online? And so I started doing uh, make your own MTV music video, make your own Toyota car commercial, make your own E-Trade baby. 
I co-founded the world's first online karaoke called K Solo Karaoke, which was sold to Fox MySpace at the height of MySpace and became MySpace Karaoke. Um, did um, user-generated radio ads, uh, which was called Target Spot, that I co-founded in 2006 or seven, uh, which was a joint venture with CBS Radio to allow consumers to create radio ads and traffic them down to the zip code and get reports on how many listeners and you know the reach and the payment was all done online. And that was sold uh, a few years ago. Bain Capital invested in that and Union Square Ventures invested in that. Um, and you know, broadcasting, we didn't call it live streaming at the time, we called it personal broadcasting, has always been this holy grail of sorts in my circles because it didn't require any kind of consumer authoring, it was just a button. Uh, and when mobile and social was available in 2011, um, I dropped everything and I decided to just go for it. And so we were actually the first mobile live streaming in the US. Um, in uh, 2014, we added um, a business model to it, which was microtransactions. So on the one side, um, users could purchase into a virtual currency, a non-crypto virtual currency at the time. Uh, and on the other side, creators could earn. Uh, we were the first to do that. Um, and um, you know, since then, a lot of uh, folks uh, came into the space, uh, Facebook Live and YouTube Live and Twitter and all that. Uh, we are extremely excited that the economy, the two-sided market that we built, um, uh, you know, continues to grow. Uh, okay. And um, we have 60,000 transactions, microtransactions a day today. And you're talking about on the YouNow.com uh, platform. Right, right. Okay. And so on YouNow.com, uh, we have uh, 40 million registered users. We have uh, several million unique users uh, every month. And now we're coming out with the props platform, okay. and we are uh, leveraging that community. Okay, um, the, the Be video before, experience. Yeah, if you don't mind, Adi, like like uh, Leon and I on our team, we always like to look at the big picture of things, right? So, can you help share with our audience what is the current state of the social media, the content creation? Arena such as like YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, and Twitter yeah, Snapchat, Snapchat, and all, Snapchat that. and all that. Because you've had a lot of experience in, in this content. Radio ads and traffic them down to the zip code and get reports on how many listeners and you know the reach and the payment was all done online. And that was sold uh, a few years ago. Bain Capital invested in that and Union Square Ventures invested in that. Um, and you know, broadcasting, we didn't call it live streaming at the time, we called it personal broadcasting, it has always been this holy grail of sorts in my circles because it didn't require any kind of consumer authoring, it was just a button. Uh, and when mobile and social was available in 2011, um, I dropped everything and I decided to just go for it. And so we were actually the first mobile live streaming in the US. Um, in uh, 2014, we added um, a business model to it, which was microtransactions. So on the one side, um, users could purchase into a virtual currency, a non-crypto virtual currency at the time. Uh, and on the other side, creators could earn. Uh, we were the first to do that. Um, and um, you know, since then, a lot of uh, folks uh, came into the space, uh, Facebook Live and YouTube Live and Twitter and all that. Uh, we are extremely excited that the economy, the two-sided market that we built, um, uh, you know, continues to grow. Uh, okay. And um, we have 60,000 transactions, microtransactions a day today. And you're talking about on the YouNow.com uh, uh, platform. Right, right. Okay. And so on YouNow.com, uh, we have uh, 40 million registered users. We have uh, several million unique users uh, every month. And now we're coming out with the props platform, okay. and we are uh, leveraging that community. Okay. Um, th the Be video experience, yeah. If you don't mind, Adi, like, like uh, Leon and I on our team, we always like to look at the big picture of things, right? So can you help share with our audience what is the current state of the social media, the content creation, arena such as like YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, and Twitter yeah, Snapchat, Snapchat and all, all that because you've had a lot of experience in, in this content creation social media arena for many years now and you have some insights behind the scenes that a lot 
of us as viewers and users may not be aware of yeah, um, from the yeah. business side? So, you know, we are part of that ecosystem because mm -hmm. the business model today is whether you're YouTube or Facebook or you now, you are a rent collector. You take 40, 50 percent of the fee of all the transactions, mm -hmm. and that's the business model. Um, and you know, when you look at really the duopoly of, of Facebook and YouTube, uh, they can you know charge what they want. So, so basically, like whenever uh, we have our cryptocurrency investing channel on YouTube, you're saying that whenever because we don't pay attention to the ads of what it makes, right? So. Where they own Universal, mm -hmm. and you know when we talk to folks like that uh, in the media industry, they are also relying on Facebook and YouTube mm -hmm. for a lot of distribution. And I don't think I don't want to speak on their yeah. behalf, but I don't think that they're happy with the fact that those uh, centralized organizations, that duopoly, can decide what revenue share there is for everybody. And, and basically, they can just pretty much demand what price they want. And these guys are have very little leverage. Yeah. And so, you know, this decentralized economy where mathematically, according to a formula, and we published our formula in our white paper, mm -hmm. everyone who contributes gets rewarded Whether is, is very appealing. Content yes. creators. Or users who users. promote the network. If I invite 20 of my friends, guess what? You know, mm -hmm. the system knows the exact value of every new registered users. You can and should be rewarded for that, and then you're motivated to continue to grow the network. Okay. We're a small company. Mm -hmm. We're 40 people. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are excited by this uh, opportunity to have, you know, asymmetric warfare. Mm -hmm. We yeah. want to harness our yeah. millions of users mm -hmm. and, you know, new uh, yeah. people who are mm -hmm. finding out about us today to work with us to, you know, appreciate the value of this new network. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a decentralized ecosystem allows all of our interests to be aligned. Mm -hmm. So in, in addition to those two points of, you know, the, uh, um, the, uh, the YouTube and Facebook controlling all the uh, control and what you just said there, you know, talk about the censorship that that mm -hmm. that you see that that we always talk about. Yeah. So, uh, as you know, in the news, uh, at, um, and in fact, you Ty, in our yeah. last video, we, we talked about at 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 apocalypse, ad apocalypse yeah. right? And YouTube is is known, and not just YouTube, but they're known for censorship. They're known mm -hmm. for for a variety of reasons. Sometimes it's not even clear why um, some things are getting censored, or f or maybe not censored, but at least flagged uh, for their content. Um, how do you think, um, what's your view on... Well, that, that's, it was, we were bringing that up because yeah. the, those two things that Adi just pointed out, yeah. that, you know, that he saw the signals that were pointing that, hey, this, this industry needs to be decentralized, you know? Yeah. And what I wanted to add was that the, the third point was that the censorship issue. Yeah. Because when things are centralized, it's easy to censor people. Mm -hmm. Like when you're the one that's controlling the platform, you can censor whoever you want. And I think that going towards a decentralized nature allows the platform and, and, and everyone to benefit because now we have more of the freedom of speech mm -hmm. for, for everyone. That's true. You know That's what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so when you saw this, uh, you know, these signals that were letting you know that the, this industry needs to be decentralized, right, there's a lot of different players that came in to, to try to solve this problem. As far as our research has shown, you guys are like yeah yeah easy. yeah about two million dollars a month right now mm -hmm. is spent on our in-app currency this is not cryptocurrency yeah. mm -hmm. which is called bars and that works only within our app mm -hmm. yeah. okay yeah. so these you now bars the users are actually buying those you now bars to give to their broadcasters they like correct to the broadcasters oh, they like, and they give them mm -hmm. also in order to Deepen their deepen. experience, mm -hmm. so they how, get they get noticed. But how are they? They get like, feedback. What, what, if I let's say I'm watching you, your channel, and I like you, what is my incentive to buy you these virtual goods? What do I get as a? Because I'm user? spending real money. Because yeah. I'm spending real money for what that I'm getting something for free. Like why would I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So by the way, we didn't invent this business model. <laughs> okay. This yeah. business model was invented in China okay. on desktop broadcasting, mm -hmm. which was you know very very big, mm -hmm. and still is. Um, and there's there's three main reasons why users spend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that blew my mind too. The first time you, you yeah. explained it to to us, yeah. you know. So one is for status. So when I spend, I get more crowns, 
when I am in the app, people see me, I have crowns, I'm somebody. That's, oh, so you're that's known as a big spender. So <laughs> you, 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 you get maybe more respect and yeah. you have a status. Yeah. Um, and, you know, people like to, you know, I'm not a newbie, I'm a veteran here, oh, you know, okay. et cetera. Yeah. And I have some authority. That's one. Mm -hmm. Two is they want to support the broadcaster. They generally, yeah. I, have, I have broadcasters that I support because yeah. I love what they're doing. They're mm -hmm. playing the guitar or mm -hmm. they're funny yeah. or they're engaging with me or, you know, I, there's a one flight attendant who broadcasts every day and she tells stories about her life and her experience as a flight attendant and answers people's questions. Mm -hmm. It's a fascinating broadcast. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. she is a pro. Uh -huh. yeah. She deserves to get paid. Uh -huh. yeah. And so, you know, the, the, the interesting thing about microtransactions is that, you know, and Mary Meeker wrote about this earlier this year in her uh, uh, overview of the digital uh, marketplace, is that generates from users 50 cents per user per hour. And that's in live streaming and in gaming. If you compare that to revenue per user per hour from advertising, that's almost 8x. So it's a very strong model because mm -hmm. you know people can actually show their appreciation and microtransactions are a real thing in this world. Yeah. So the second thing is to support the broadcaster. Mm -hmm. okay. The third thing is to create communication. So people are at okay. home, people are on their device, they're usually alone. Yeah. If you are spending, you know, you're catching the attention of somebody, now they're yeah, responding to you, now exactly. you're making friends, now okay. they're calling you out, etc. Yeah, because we, we, so, we do that on our channel as well. When we initially started our channel four years ago, we would pay attention to the people that were donating to our channel. Mm -hmm. You know, like, who's this guy who just donated to us? And they, they, we, we mention them, and sometimes they just ask to be remain private, but we still thank them anyway. They've helped them. You've created a bigger audience for them. And they get a cut a piece, like 50, 60 percent of uh, that revenue. Mm -hmm. and, and, so and that's bought with real US, US fiat dollars correct. or euros or is this real fiat currency? Oh yeah, that yeah, using? yeah. About two million dollars a month right now mm -hmm. is spent on our in-app currency. This is not cryptocurrency, yeah. mm -hmm. which is called bars, and that works only within our app. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah. so these YouNow bars, the users are actually buying those YouNow bars to give to the broadcasters they like? Correct, to the broadcasters they like, and they give them mm -hmm. also in order to deepen their deepen. experience. Mm -hmm. So they, how, get, they get noticed. But how are they? They get like, feedback. What, what, if I, let's say I'm watching you, your channel, and I like you, what is my incentive to buy you these virtual goods? What do I get as a Because I'm user? spending real money. Because yeah. I'm spending real money for what, that I'm getting something for free. Like, why would I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, by the way, we didn't invent this business model. <laughs> okay. This yeah. business model was invented in China okay. on desktop broadcasting, mm -hmm. which was, you know, very, very big mm -hmm. and still is. Um, and there's, there's three main reasons why users spend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that blew my mind, too, the first time you, you yeah. explained it to, to us, yeah. you know, so. One is for status. So when I spend, I get more crowns. When I am in the app, people see me, I have crowns, I'm somebody. That's, oh, so you're known terrific. as a big spender. So <laughs> you, 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 you get maybe more respect and yeah. you have a status. Yeah. Um, and, you know, people like to, you know, I'm not a newbie, I'm a veteran here, oh, you know, okay. et cetera. Yeah. And I have some authority. That's one. Mm -hmm. Two is they want to support the broadcaster. They generally, yeah. I, have, I have broadcasters that I support because yeah. I love what they're doing. They're mm -hmm. playing the guitar or mm -hmm. they're funny yeah. or they're engaging with me or, you know, I, there's a one flight attendant who broadcasts every day and she tells stories about her life and her experience as a flight attendant and answers people's questions. Mm -hmm. It's a fascinating broadcast. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. she is a pro. Uh -huh. yeah. She deserves to get paid. Uh -huh. yeah. And so, you know, the, the, the interesting thing about microtransactions is that, you know, and Mary Meeker wrote about this earlier this year in her uh, uh, overview of the digital uh, marketplace, is that generates from users 50 cents per user per hour. And that's in live streaming and in gaming. If you compare that to revenue per user per hour from advertising, that's almost 8x. So it's a very strong model because mm -hmm. you know people can actually show their appreciation and microtransactions are a real thing in this world. Yeah. So the second thing is to support the broadcaster. Mm -hmm. okay. The third thing is to create communication. So people are at okay. home, people are on their device, they're usually alone. Yeah. If you are spending, you know, you're catching the attention of somebody, now they're yeah, responding to you, now exactly. you're making friends, now okay. they're calling you out, etc. Yeah, we, we and the payment was all done online. 
and that was sold uh, a few years ago. Bain Capital invested in that, and Union Square Ventures invested in that. Um, and you know, broadcasting, we didn't call it live streaming at the time, we called it personal broadcasting, has always been this holy grail of sorts in my circles because it didn't require any kind of consumer authoring, it was just a button. Uh, and when mobile and social was available in 2011, um, I dropped everything and I decided to just go for it. And so we were actually the first mobile live streaming in the US. Um, in uh, 2014, we added um, a business model to it, which was microtransactions. So on the one side, um, users could purchase into a virtual currency, a non-crypto virtual currency at the time. Uh, and on the other side, creators could earn. Uh, we were the first to do that. Um, and um, you know, since then, a lot of uh, folks uh, came into the space, uh, Facebook Live and YouTube Live and Twitter and all that. Uh, we are extremely excited that the economy, the two-sided market that we built, um, uh, you know, continues to grow. Uh, okay. And um, we have 60,000 transactions, microtransactions a day today. And you're talking about on the YouNow.com uh, platform. Right, right. Okay. And so on YouNow.com, uh, we have uh, 40 million registered users. We have uh, several million unique users uh, every month. And now we're coming out with the props platform, okay. and we are uh, leveraging that community. Okay, um, th the Be video before, experience. Yeah, if you mind, Adi, like like uh, Leon and I on our team, we always like to look at the big picture of things, right? So, can you help share with our audience what is the current state of the social media, the content creation? Arena such as like YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, and Twitter, yeah, Snapchat, Snapchat, and all, all that. Because you've had a lot of experience in in this content creation social media arena for many years now, and you have some insights behind the scenes that a lot of us as viewers and users may not be aware of. Yeah, from the yeah. business side. So you know we are part of that ecosystem because mm -hmm. the business model today is whether you're YouTube or Facebook or you now you are a rent collector. You take 40, 50% of the fee of all the transactions and that's the business model. Um, and you know, when you look at really the duopoly of, of Facebook and YouTube, uh, they can you know, charge what they want. So, so basically like whenever uh, we have our cryptocurrency investing channel on YouTube, you're saying that whenever, because we don't pay attention to the ads of what it makes, right? So where every dollar in ad revenue that, that our channel generates, then YouTube takes about 40% of it. Nine Inch Nails at the time, and Peter Gabriel, and Marilyn Manson, there would be a digital track. And so when you put your audio into, your audio disc into the computer, there would be a little folder come up, and you click on it, the executable would have basically an electronic press kit. And I would do uh, video games where you could mix your own Nine Inch Nails audio, or you can you know, watch videos from Peter Gabriel. Uh, and then when the internet came, um, a lot of people came to me and said, hey, we want to put that online. Can we do this type of interactive video online? And so I started doing uh, make your own MTV music video, make your own Toyota car commercial, make your own E-Trade baby. I co-founded the world's first online karaoke called K-Solo Karaoke, which was sold to Fox MySpace at the height of MySpace and became MySpace Karaoke. Um, did um, user-generated radio ads, uh, which was called Target Spot, that I co-founded in 2006 or 7, uh, which was a joint venture with CBS Radio to allow consumers to create radio ads and traffic them down to the zip code and get reports on how many listeners and you know the reach and the payment was all done online. And that was sold uh, a few years ago. Bain Capital invested in that and Union Square Ventures invested in that. Um, and you know, broadcasting, we didn't call it live streaming at the time, we called it personal broadcasting, has always been this holy grail of sorts in my circles because it didn't require any kind of consumer authoring, it was just a button. Uh, and when mobile and social was available in 2011, um, I dropped everything and I decided to just go for it. And so we were actually the first mobile live streaming in the US. Um, in uh, 2014, we added um, a business model to it, which was microtransactions. So on the one side, 
um, users could purchase into a virtual currency, a non-crypto virtual currency at the time. Uh, and on the other side, creators could earn. Uh, we were the first to do that. Um, and um, you know, since then, a lot of uh, folks uh, came into the space, uh, Facebook Live and YouTube Live and Twitter and all that. Uh, we are extremely excited that the economy, the two-sided market that we built, um, uh, you know, continues to grow. Uh, okay. And um, we have 60,000 transactions, microtransactions, a day today. And you're talking about on the YouNow.com uh, uh, platform. Right, right. Okay. And so on YouNow.com, uh, we have uh, 40 million registered users. We have uh, several million unique users uh, every month. And now we're coming out with the props platform, okay. and we are uh, leveraging that community. Okay, um, th the Be video experience. Yeah, if you don't mind, Adi, like like uh, Leon and I on our team, we always like to look at the big picture. At revenue, mm -hmm. and, and, so and that's bought with real US, US fiat dollars correct. or euros or is this real fiat currency? Oh yeah, that yeah, using? yeah. About two million dollars a month right now mm -hmm. is spent on our in-app currency. This is not cryptocurrency, yeah. mm -hmm. which is called bars, and that works only within our app. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah. so these YouNow bars, the users are actually buying those YouNow bars to give to the broadcasters they like? Correct, to the broadcasters they like, and they give them mm -hmm. also in order to Deepen their experience, mm -hmm. so they how, get they get noticed. But how are they? They get like, feedback. What, what, if I let's say I'm watching you, your channel, and I like you, what is my incentive to buy you these virtual goods? What do I get as a? Because I'm spending user? real money. Because yeah. I'm spending real money for what that I'm getting something for free. Like why would I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So by the way, we didn't invent this business model. <laughs> okay. This yeah. business model was invented in China okay. on desktop broadcasting, mm -hmm. which was you know very very big, mm -hmm. and still is. Um, and there's there's three main reasons why users spend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that blew my mind too. The first time you you yeah. explained it to to us, yeah. you know. So one is for status. So when I spend, I get more crowns. When I am in the app, people see me. I have crowns. I'm somebody. That's, oh, so you're known terrific. as a big spender. So <laughs> you 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 get maybe more respect, and yeah. you have a status. Yeah. Um, and you know people like to you know I'm not a newbie. I'm a veteran here, oh, you know, okay. etc. Yeah. And I have some authority. That's one. Mm -hmm. Two is they want to support the broadcaster. They generally yeah. I have I have broadcasters that I support because yeah. I love what they're doing. They're mm -hmm. playing the guitar, or mm -hmm. they're funny, yeah. or they're engaging with me, or you know I, there's a one flight attendant who broadcasts every day and. She tells stories about her life and her experience as a flight attendant and answers people's questions. Mm -hmm. It's a fascinating broadcast. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. she is a pro. Uh -huh. yeah. She deserves to get paid. Uh -huh. yeah. And so, you know, the, the, the interesting thing about microtransactions is that, you know, and Mary Meeker wrote about this earlier this year in her uh, uh, overview of the digital uh, marketplace, is that generates from users 50 cents per user per hour. And that's in live streaming and in gaming. If you compare that to revenue per user per hour from advertising, that's almost 8x. So it's a very strong model because mm -hmm. you know people can actually show their appreciation and microtransactions are a real thing in this world. Yeah. So the second thing is to support the broadcaster. Mm -hmm. okay. The third thing is to create communication. So people are at okay. home, people are on their device, they're usually alone. Yeah. If you are spending, you know, you're catching the attention of somebody. Now they're yeah, responding to you. Now exactly. you're making friends. Now okay. they're calling you out. Yeah, exactly. because we, we so, do that. We do that on our channel as well. When we initially started our channel four years ago, we would pay attention to the people that were donating to our channel. Mm -hmm. 